My name is Robin Hesselgesser, and I'd like to welcome you to the show. This show is really about creating change. So the people that you meet and the stories that you hear every week will hopefully empower and inspire you to make positive change in your life. So whether it's about your financial status or your career or relationships or just wanting to live your best life, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. Today we are on our third part of a three-part series about money and what it means to you and how you can keep more of it for yourself and not give it to the government. My name is Robin and today we have Tom Quinn again. Tom, thank you so much for being with My me pleasure. back again today. Yeah. You are the president of Next Stage Financial and in the previous two shows we've talked a little bit about your story and what you do and how your company came to be. Now I want to tell you a little bit about my story. So I was in the corporate world for many years and I worked my, I worked my way up as you can imagine and I, I loved what I did. I was in charge of global real estate acquisitions and space planning and I had many different departments under me such as telecom and IT and it uh, I got to travel and I got to design and I did a, I did a lot of things but I did what most people do I think I took advantage of the benefit package you know that was important to me and they offered a 401k and I took advantage of that and as I grew in the company and got promoted then that percentage increased as, long, as well as the stock options that I was given, right? right. So that's, that's all I did. I, I contributed to the 401k and, and that, was my, that was my savings plan for my future. That's what I thought I, that's all I thought I needed to do. That in combination with a savings account. Well, after being in the corporate world for a few decades, I woke up one day and said, I just don't feel like I'm making a difference. I don't feel like I'm contributing. I was not looking forward to getting up in the morning and going to work. It had, I felt like I had gotten as far as I could go or I was meant to go. So. I made a huge change and I became a small business owner. And in so doing, because I had been kind of educated from an employee standpoint, I wanted to offer a benefit package to my employees, right? Now I had a combination of employees and independent contractors, but in addition to the, the time off and the vacation days and the compensation package I wanted to offer or at least look into what it would look like if I offered a health insurance package or a 401k. Now this was a, a, a while back but in so doing I had a company meeting and I asked people what what is going to appeal to you? You know do you want to have this health insurance package? Do you want to have this 401k option? And what was amazing to me is I, 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 I did not expect the lack of enthusiasm. I, that was a shock to me. And of course at that time, and I don't know if it's the same today, but I had to have a certain participation rate in order to get that group rate to, to get the costs down so that they could afford it and I could afford it. And it was, a, it was a very frustrating process for me. So today I want to talk to you about not just the individual, not just the couple, you know, in a personal level, but I want to talk to that small business owner because most of us at one point or another get to the point where we're thinking about our purpose and we're thinking about our professional career. What is it that we want to do and what does that look like? And 
you know as well as I do that the statistics of being in a job for one, one job, one career for 25 to 35 years is no more. Uh, studies show that the average time anybody's at a job right now is, is five years. And there are more and more of us becoming entrepreneurs, especially women. So today I really want to talk about that small business owner and, and what advantages are, are open to them and what your firm does for those, those small business companies and their employees. Mm-hmm. Well, that there, was a lot. That <laughs> was a lot. So uh, the traditional path, as you said, is to, you know, most companies, once they get to a certain size, feel like if they don't offer, uh, offering a 401k is a necessity, uh, as much of a necessity as having a website, right? Because it helps attract and retain new employees and prospective employees. Um, unless you're dealing with like the 20 to 30 year old crowd maybe who is doesn't care as much about health insurance because they feel like they're never gonna have a medical problem right. or and they're not they may not be really in doing a lot of saving uh, most people have to want to check the box you offer some measure of health health insurance some measure of uh, a 401k so even though uh, so so you need to provide a 401k to again attract and retain uh, routine employees and so the, the the and then what factors into that too is um, sometimes you can attract employees by offering a match to that 401k right but what most employers don't realize is that well there's not a lot of cost to the employer to do that um, there are a lot of risks to the employee and to themselves because 401ks are are fraught with all these perils right you're as we discussed in the last segment, you've agreed knowingly or unknowingly when you put money in a 401k or qualified plan, like an IRA or a SEP or 403b, to postpone the tax and the tax calculation and pay tax later when Uncle Sam decides what the tax rate is. And we are at, by the way, historic income tax level lows now. People think taxes are high now, they're not, they're not anywhere close to what they were in uh, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So. Um, it's like the question, would you rather pay tax on the seed or on the harvest? Well, most people say, oh, well, absolutely on the seed because the harvest is going to be a big number. But with a 401k, you've decided the exact opposite. You've, you've postponed the tax and the tax calculation to the future. And then, then the other risk we've talked a little bit about is um, the market risk. 401ks and qualified plans force you whether you want to or not, to invest in the stock market, which is uncorrelated, it's a lot of risk. Most people don't have a plan for when to move to a safe money market, right? Mm-hmm. They just, they're, they use the buy, hold, and pray strategy, right? You keep <laughs> putting money in, hope the, hope the markets go up, mm-hmm. and then, then there's a timing issue, right? So you might get lucky and retire just before 2008, for example, when we had a 42% when we had one of the worst U.S. market corrections in market history, right. well, what if, if you retired in 2007, you're, you, you, you missed the bullet, right? But what if you were going to retire in 2008 or 2009? Or right. So um, people, people, that buy, hold, and pray strategy is really, uh, is really risky because all the risks that caused you to fall into the hole in 2000 through 2002 or in the big market crash in 2007 or 8, you start clawing your way out if the markets do well, but you're exposed to the same risk that caused you to fall into the hole in the first place with the buy, hold, and pray strategy because most people aren't day traders and they, they're not going to be, re- they're really good at what they do, including the employer, mm-hmm. right? So that's the, that's the market risk aspect of it. And then the fee risk is there's tremendous risk in fees and we talked about this in greater detail in the earlier segment, but there are the fees of the plan itself, which are typically borne by the employer, employees, not the employer, and then the fees for the investments inside the plan that are largely undisclosed to most employees. And these fees are tr- tremendously wealth eroding. They really are, they really can eat up half of someone's lifetime savings over, over a working career. So in addition to fee risk, um, um, market risk and taxation risk. Again, it's longevity risk. You're, 
you're forced to invest, and we talked again about this earlier, um, for the latter third of your life from let's say age 65 to 100, if you're relegated to pedestrian investments that have no risk, yes, you may not lose money, but, but if inflation's running at two to 3% per year on average, if you're not at least keeping up with inflation, you're losing money by definition. So most seniors can't afford to expose themselves to any level of risk. And if, if you follow the traditional path, it could lead to just treading water financially for a third of your life. So, that, so that's the other risk. Um, and so, so there are other plans. There's, there's a tax-free plan that we offer that could augment. I think companies will always continue to offer um, for, for the foreseeable future a 401k because the public perception is you're not a real employer if you don't offer a 401k, right? right? So, and because it doesn't cost much, if anything, to the employer, they're, gonna, they're going to offer them to attract and retain employees with or without a match. I think, though, it's incumbent upon the business owner uh, because employees automatically assume that that means the employer is promoting that as the best way to save for retirement. Right. So it's kind of incumbent upon, if you care about your employees, you might want to also introduce other ideas. Ideas are free, right? There's sure. a tax-free plan that enables you to avoid all of the risks we just talked about, mm -hmm. but it's not as commonly sold. The, the, it's, the fees are are uh, not undisclosed, right? And it doesn't make as much money for Wall Street. So people typically don't hear it. Again, business owners are laser focused on growing their business. As they should and be. And when I was a business owner, I was, I was trying to grow a software co company or a software consulting firm mm -hmm. uh, early on in my career. And I was like you doing what my parents or grandparents told me, save as much as you can, try to pay off and pay down your house as quickly as possible, right? right? Because my grandfather lived through the Great Depression when, right. when banks uh, tried to call mortgage notes due and payable the next day after the market crash. Right. And he saw neighbors lose their homes, even though they had never missed a mortgage payment. Right? And we're never late. There was a demand feature on mortgage notes back then that allowed these financial institutions to take your home. So my grandfather said, save, I threw money in the 401k. That's what most people do. Mm -hmm. and they act in the avoidance of fear and okay. there's this herd mentality. So, so, Is it true that there are options for small business owners that they can provide those, those other options other than a 401k, for example, to employees? With little or no cost to the to the employee to the employer, absolutely. And uh, so th there's a tax-free plan that enables you to put instead of pre-tax dollars that you would put in a 401k or qualified plan, post-tax dollars, and fund a same tax-free retirement. That money can then grow income tax-free. It can uh, you can take it out any time you want, rather than with a 401k. Prior to age 59 and a half, mm -hmm. there's a 10% penalty on qualified funds if you should take them out for anything other than an emergency and, and, and as a loan. So, so, so you have full access to your money. That's, again, one of the problems with the 401k is you're highly restricted, right? You're, you're in a straitjacket. You don't have liquidity, you don't have safety, and it's difficult to get good rate of return, mm -hmm. right? So. So yes, in a tax-free plan, the money can grow tax-free. You can take it out anytime you want tax-free. And when you pass away, it goes to your family, income tax-free. So Tom, what do you say to a viewer who's watching and they say, Tom, I can see you're a good guy and I can see that you know what you're talking about, but I'm good. I've, I've, got, I've got what I need. I've got... I've got everything lined up the way that I, that I, you know, somebody told me that I should do. I'm happy with my financial advisor. I've got everything lined up. As you said, I, I'm too busy. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm running a business. I, I, you know, I've got everything squared away. Whether it's, a, whether it's an individual or a couple or a business owner, what do you say to that? I think the, uh, you know, most of us would agree that no one you've ever, no one I've ever met has a monopoly on all the good ideas, right? And, and uh, a lot of people get comfortable, it's inertia, right? You get comfortable doing what you're doing. So there's a bias towards uh, agreeing with or seeking out information which confirms 
that what you're doing is the best thing, right? We, we all want to think that we're doing the right thing. Right, and so you get in this, you get in that inertia is a very powerful force. And so, but ideas are free. And listen, are you confident enough in your current plan and your current advisor to get a second opinion, right? Oh, that's a good way to look at it. Right, and can you afford, do you, because what's the worst case? You'll either reaffirm that what you're doing, Robin, is the best thing for you and your family and your employees, or when do you want to find out that you're, you know, you've allotted two hours to get the airport and it's going to be an eight-hour drive through a traffic jam? When do you want to know that? Before you leave, right? So, so the point is, there are only two outcomes there in getting a, taking a second look, right? Right. And that's that's really part of it. Is is you just don't want to stick your head in the sand and and uh, and because there are ways you can significantly improve and to a small to medium sized business owner a lot of it there are some creative strategies with this tax free plan and other uh, uh, vehicles that we use where you can efficiently get money out of the corporate pocket and into your personal pocket with maybe some tax savings as well so it really is going to benefit your to, if you're willing to take a look at some of these things and as an employer you don't need to endorse them you're just bringing ideas to the table for your employees and keeping an open mind with respect to your business it's easy to get tunnel vision as a business owner and tie up all of your retirement savings in the success or failure of the business your ability to sell that business at some future time what if market conditions change right so as a business owner specifically you got to be diversified. You should prudently be diversifying, not all your eggs in one basket, if you will, mm -hmm. but have some money outside of the business. What if your industry changes and you owned a bunch of bookstores? We talked about this earlier, right? If you owned a Borders bookstores before Amazon was around, right? Yeah. And expected to be able to sell those, a chain of bookstores, right. boom, there was a sea change in an industry, right. and that's no longer available. So that's an easy analogy, but. So uh, business owners should take some time to step back, try to diversify their, their transition or you know, exit plan at some point in the future. And in the interim, uh, have, maybe have a significant life-changing impact in helping their employees succeed financially. So I think that's, that's why it's well worth taking some time to get educated. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like you said, there's not a monopoly on good ideas. I'm curious about one thing. When you did an analysis for me, I was I was blown away by the the differences in in if I stayed on the path that I was on and the path that I that I could be on because the path that I was on in the example that you gave me, you know, I would run out of money at at, at years 80, you know, 80 years old, um, and I hope to live beyond that. You know, as long as I, as long as I'm healthy, I hope to live beyond 80. So, you know, what what I asked myself was, I was a little bit disappointed. Number one, I was disappointed in myself because maybe I didn't do due diligence. Maybe I didn't know the questions to ask. But I also was a little bit disappointed in. You know, I, I thought I had things lined out perfectly with, with my accountant, for example, and, and that didn't turn out to be the case. And also, um, I wanted to ask you really quickly, if somebody is only at um, a position, because I talked about before, if somebody's at a position for five years or with a company and then they move on, what happens to that? What, what happens if they're in another option other than a 401k, what happens, what happens to, the, to those dollars? The, um, two things, that's a very good question. One is these tax-free plans are portable, but also employers can, uh, can also do the equivalent of matching investing for the, for the employees they want to try to retain. Um, so, so in the worst case, they're portable. You can take them. So there's like group life insurance that many times is not portable, like your employer had life insurance, so people think, oh, I'm covered, I got enough life insurance, it doubles my yearly salary, but then then they they don't buy any of their own uh, permanent or personal life insurance, then they change jobs, like you said, and then they find out they're not insurable because it's years later, right? So, um, 
Unlike that, this is a poor, the tax-free plan is portable, and you can take it with you. And um, it, employers can use it to um, both attract and retain employees, but also as a retention re retention employees for highly compensated employees. Now, it's not available. It's uh, it's potentially not available to. It can be available to everyone. But again, it's just another option that I think um, the employer should. Um, investigate to see if they can offer, uh, you know, I, again, ideas are free. The yeah. employer wants to offer those ideas. Thank you very much. Yep. Well, you can find out more about Tom and his company on my website, www.robinjhesselgesser.com. And Tom, why don't you give our viewers your website information once again so that they know it. So the company name is Next Stage Financial, and the website is www.nextstagefinancial.com. And you can schedule a free complimentary, we've offered a free complimentary consultation to business owners and individuals that are viewers of your show. And they can schedule a time for, again, web-based or an in-person um, meeting at their convenience. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here again. You're welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. So since you're sitting here, I always try to end each segment with on the upside. And uh, so if you'll indulge me, I want to tell you a so, little bit of story that perhaps our viewers will enjoy also. I was reading a story about this, uh, this, business, this businessman. He was, now this, this was 100 years ago, and so the times were a little bit different. But he had his own business and some land, and he fell onto hard times, and so unfortunately he had to borrow a lot of money from a loan shark. Now, this loan shark, not only was he a little bit difficult to get along with, but he was, um, shall we say, aesthetically challenged, and he wasn't very slim, nor was he very young, but he had an eye for this businessman's daughter. He fancied her quite a bit. Well, this businessman knew that his, his land and his business was at stake. He wasn't able to pay his loan back. So he asked the loan shark, what can we do? Can we work out some kind of arrangement? And the loan shark said, yeah, I got an idea. You give your daughter to me and let me marry her and I'll wipe out your debt. And the businessman you know, weighed his options, keeping in mind that his daughter happens to be overhearing this whole conversation. Different times, 100 years ago, right? And he says, well, I, you know, I, I can't, and so the loan shark, tell you, what, tell you what we'll do. We'll leave it up to fate. I've got a bag here. We're standing on ground with a pebble-ridden environment, lots of pebbles. I'll put two pebbles in my bag. Your daughter can draw out a pebble. If she draws out a black pebble, then I get to marry her and your debt is forgiven. If she draws a white pebble, your debt is forgiven, but she does not have to marry me. You're free to go on about your lives. The daughter stepped up and said, Daddy, let's make the deal. So they made the deal. So the loan shark is out getting the pebbles in the bag, and he puts two pebbles in the bag. Now the daughter sees that he puts two black pebbles in the bag. So she knows this. So when it comes time to put her hand in the bag, she's got three options, right? One of them is to do nothing. One of them is to expose the loan shark and then she's not sure what's gonna to happen to her dad. And the third option is to draw it and know that her fate's been sealed and she's gonna sacrifice the rest of her future for her father. So what does she do? She takes a pebble out and she drops it. And she says, oh, how clumsy of me. I'm so sorry. Well, because they're on pebble-ridden ground, there's no telling which one she dropped. You can't see, it's like, it's like trying to find you know, that straw in the haystack thing, right? 
So she says, well, I've got an idea. We know what I drew, what's left in the bag. So if there's a black one left in the bag, then we know I drew a white one. And if there's a white one in the bag, we know I drew a black one. So the loan shark now has, has an option himself. You know, he can admit to being exposed or he can let it play out. So they let it play out. So guess which one was left in the bag? <laughs> the black one, of course, because he had put two in, and so she, she, she was off the hook and ready to lead her own future. I tell that story because to me the moral is sometimes when you think you see all of your options, maybe there's another one. You know, problem solving is, is being able to think outside of the box and being able to have faith in yourself that maybe there truly is another option and everything will work out well. So I think that story was prudent because of your visit here today because you provide other options. Absolutely. This is Robin Hesselgesser. Thank you for joining us today. Next week, we hope to inspire and empower you to make an even better change in your life. See you next week.